We're here in front of Buda Castle overlooking the Danube and the beautiful city of Budapest. And we're going to show you how we spend our time here. Budapest is filled with tons of historical landmarks, beautiful views, and funky districts, which means there is plenty of things to do and see. On our first day, we started out on the Pesh side of the city, and the first thing we did was check out Hero Square. Construction began in 1896 to celebrate 1,000th year anniversary of the Hungarian state. The back halves of the monument each have seven statues representing the different Hungarian heroes. And the column in the front features the angel Gabriel holding the crown of St. Stephen, the first king of Hungary. Also in Hero Square is the tomb of the unknown soldier and views of the Museum of Fine Art and the Palace of Fine Art. A three minute walk away from Hero Square of Vashta Hunyat Castle. This castle was actually an exhibition built originally of wood in 1896 to celebrate the history of Hungary by depicting architectural features of different types of castles in the empire. It was so popular that it was refurbished in stone and now makes for a beautiful spot to hang out. We were lucky enough to see a rehearsal performance take place. Finally, in the city park area is the star attraction, the Sechenyi Thermal Baths. Budapest lies on a thermal basin, which means that naturally hot water can be extracted from the ground, which the locals harness into various bathhouses around the city. Sheshchenyi is the largest of all the bathhouses and features plenty of different baths, saunas, and steam rooms, as well as the famous picturesque outdoor pool. Not only are the baths fun, but the spring water is also supposed to have health benefits, which the locals love to take advantage of. Budapest is easily walkable by foot, but there is also a nice metro system of buses, trams, and subways. In particular, we love the Millennium M1 line, which runs under the famous Andrasi Avenue. Built in 1896, the M1 line retains its historical charm in the stations and cars. We use the M1 line to take us from Shochenyi Bath back into the city center to get some dinner and wrap up our first day. To charge up some energy for our second day in Budapest, we started our day out at New York Cafe, perhaps the most glamorous cafe we have ever been to. Inside on the ground level of the New York Palace, the New York Cafe has been in operation for over 120 years. The interior is beautifully decorated and the food and drinks were definitely tasty. We made a reservation in advance which we recommend, but the line was pretty short, so if you don't have one, you should be okay. Hello, so we're here at the New York Cafe in Budapest. So we got a strudel selection for Dom, cappuccino, and I got a sponge cake with lots of whipped cream and chocolate, and a hot chocolate. After we finished our desserts and drinks, we took some time to walk around and explore Pest. There are plenty of neat streets to wander around with beautiful architecture to enjoy. Sometimes the best part of enjoying any city is just strolling around and taking it all in.
After walking around for a while, we arrived at St. Stephen's Basilica, the largest church in Budapest in all of Hungary. Completed in 1905 and named after the first king of Hungary, St. Stephen's is a beautiful church to check out. The inside is great, but the best part about St. Stephen's is climbing up to the dome at the top. After a cool Instagram worthy staircase, you will get to enjoy one of the best views in the city. From the top of St. Stephen's you can see the square below and a lot of the city including the crown jewel of Budapest, the Hungarian Parliament Building, which is our next stop. Like many of the key attractions, the Parliament Building was built as a celebration of 1,000 years of Hungary, and what the architects came up with is one of the most beautiful buildings in all of Europe. It was a pleasure to be able to walk all the way around the entire Parliament Building and to enjoy it from all different angles. After we spent time at the Parliament, we decided to take a walk along the Danube River, which has long been the lifeline for the city of Budapest. You get an amazing view of the Buddha side and the many sites we plan to explore tomorrow. Along the Danube, we came to the Shoes of the Danube Memorial. Towards the end of World War II, thousands of Jews were killed by the Nazi-aligned government of Hungary. Many were taken to the Danube, told to remove their shoes, and then shot, leaving their bodies to plunge into the cold waters below. Finished in 2006, this memorial remembers the thousands of men, women, and children who were needlessly murdered to teach future generations to never let such things happen again. After a long day of exploring pests, we decided to get the famed Hungarian dish goulash for dinner and then call the night because our busiest day is coming up next. On day one and two, we explore all of Pest, leaving us with one day to explore Buda. But before we cross the river, we have to first check out the Great Market Hall. The Great Market Hall is the largest market in Budapest and one of the largest indoor markets in Europe. It spans multiple levels and has everything you could imagine from produce, meats and hot food to clothing and souvenirs. There were many unique things to see but we knew the one thing we had to buy. Hello, so we just bought some paprika for our mom <laughs> to give it to her as a souvenir gift. With the market behind us, we finally crossed over into the Buddha side on a nice pedestrian only bridge. And the first thing we did was climb Gellert Hill for the highest view of the city. This was not the easiest climb, especially on a hot day, but the higher we got, the more we could see that it was going to be worth it. The view from Gellert Hill was breathtaking, giving a sweeping look at the whole city. Oh, that was even longer of a hike than St. Stephen's Cathedral, but an even better view. We've got the Parliament Building. We got St. Stephen's, we got the whole city side of Pesh and a bit of Buddha. It is a magnificent view. 
Yeah. And if you have a chance to walk up this hill, try to do it earlier so it's not as hot as it yeah. is right now. Middle of July may be the worst time yeah. for this. <laughs> and at the top of the hill, you can also check out the Citadel and the Liberty Statue. Originally built by the Soviets to honor themselves after liberating Hungary in World War II, it now honors all Hungarians who sacrificed their lives for a free Hungary. Hi, so we just finished climbing up the hill and now we're back down to the bottom of the hill and we're just about to go into Geller bathhouse and take a nice soak to cool off. Located in Hotel Gellert, at the base of Gellert Hill, Gellert Bath is the other famous bathhouse of Budapest. Gellert has a beautiful Art Nouveau design and it feels like bathing in a museum. There are thermal baths and saunas as well as an awesome outdoor wave pool which has a great Gatsby feel to it. After relaxing in Geller Baths, we made our way over to Buda Castle. The current version is a marvelous Baroque palace built in the 16th century, which the Hungarian royalty used to live in. The palace grounds are huge, and you can stroll all around and enjoy the statues and sights, as well as the amazing view. And if you have extra time, you can go inside to tour the palace. A quick walk through Buda will then take you to perhaps the most beautiful part of the entire city, Matthias Church and Fisherman's Bastion. Fisherman's Bastion is a neo-Gothic and neo-Romanesque terrace that provides amazing views of the city. Built at the beginning of the 20th century, Fisherman Bastion also pays tribute to Hungary's history as it features seven towers which represent the seven Magyar tribes which founded Hungary. Matthias Church is also a really cool site because it was founded by St. Stephen in the year 1015. Although the current version was built in the 14th century, it still makes it one of the oldest churches in Hungary. St. Stephen's presence remains with his statue in the center of the square. We took some time to enjoy the view from Fisherman's Bastion, and then we made our way down the hill and over to the chain bridge, which is beautiful to see both in the day and at night. After we crossed the bridge, it officially wrapped up our amazing trip to Budapest. Thank you so much for watching our video on things to do in Budapest. We want to include this short segment at the end to talk about some of the things that we didn't have mm -hmm. time to see during our trip. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we weren't able to visit was visiting Buda's bath. It's the third thermal bath available in Budapest. We already went to two when we were there, so we thought maybe we shouldn't go to the third one. Uh, if we had more time, we would have. Um, it is the most Turkish bath uh, available. By that, I meant it's the oldest Turkish bath there. And then the other uh, exhibit that, or museum actually, that is really highly recommended was the Budapest House of Horrors. Uh, this is a museum dedicated to showing off some of the travesties committed by the communist government and the fascist government during the Cold War and World War II. Uh, it depicts how, they, how the governments kept tabs on the population, even tortured people who stood against it. So uh, if that era of history is really interesting to you, that's worth checking out. Mm -hmm. The third thing we weren't able to visit was the Hungarian State Opera House. Unfortunately, when we were there, both the outside and the inside was under renovation. They did provide, offer to provide a short concert, but in the lobby, so you weren't even able to go in. So we didn't think it was worth it to, um, to stay, but hopefully by the time you guys get there, uh, the renovation will be done. And then finally, there's a lot of art galleries and museums uh, throughout the city. There's a lot of stuff on Castle here near, near Castle Hill, Hill near Buda Castle. Um, we like to explore the city streets and, and food and that's kind of our, our go-to thing when we travel places. We know a lot of 
people love going to museums and art galleries and, and there are a few of those in Budapest that uh, are really well done and, and we heard good things about. So if that's something that you're interested, check it out. Mm -hmm. So thank you again for watching our video. Stay tuned for more from our trip in Central Europe where Dom and Maman from Domination Travels. Bye.